Thank you very much, Mike, for your introduction. And uh, thank you to the other officers of ECOP for uh, inviting me once again to be here and congratulations on your successful conference. Don Emilio, thank you for hosting lunch today. And of course, congratulations to Mr. Henry C. and the C family. <laughs> to Joel Edesma's team in St. Luke's. And to all our other awardees for being such model employers. And we need model employers in times like this. And to all of you, and to all of the leaders and officers of ECOP, led by June Ortiz Luis this year, thank you also that through all the years that I have served as president, ECOP has always shown the sense of community and corporate social responsibility that I have asked from Philippine business. Salamat yun. Salamat sa yung buong team. You have always focused on what the synergy of government and the private sector can do to upgrade our human resources, to lower the cost of business, and to generate quality jobs for our growing labor force. And today, once again, I would like to thank you for the resolutions that you have made. Number one, to preserve whatever jobs and businesses you have. Number two, to, maintain, to minimize job losses and business dislocations. Number three, to build the capacity of the domestic economy to create jobs and businesses. And number four, to unite in support of reform and transformation in society. In your resolution, you have given several means by which you and we, we will attain all of this. So thank you so much for that and congratulations. <laughs> the success of business and industry depends on how well on we get together. And it also depends, of course, on the excellence of our labor force. The genuine concern of the employers for the well-being of their workers as well as their companies, and this is what our awardees exemplify, and government's sound policies that serve as the framework for continuous growth. In these trying economic times for the global economy, we must tackle many challenges at once to keep our economy and way of life going strong. On the part of government, we must live within our means and run a lean, efficient government. This includes continued fiscal prudence and efforts to work towards a balanced budget. All the while, we must also simultaneously invest in key programs for our people. For instance, food on the table, education for all, skills training, and good health for everyone. And at this special time in world economic history, we are focused on creating jobs and keeping existing ones to prevent the global economic slump from becoming a Philippine crisis. Our priorities are on activities that can create the most number of jobs while allowing us to improve our people's lives. As I said earlier in government, we are undertaking massive belt tightening in order to fund among other things, the Comprehensive Livelihood and Emergency Employment Program, or CLEEP, C-L-E-E-P. CLEEP is area-specific. 
Secretary Nitoy Roque, who uh, helped in choosing our outstanding employers today, but who is not here because his son is graduating, isn't it? Um, has identified with your help the names of the employees of the workers who lost their jobs because of the global crisis. And we have farmed out those names by area to different cabinet members. And the different cabinet members are supposed to supervise the clip in their respective areas, among other things, to spur emergency jobs in specific sectors that are best suited to each region's resources and potential for development. A lot of you are in industry. A lot of industries in Calabarzon, and a lot of our problems are in Calabarzon, a lot of which are in Laguna. So Secretary Peter Favila is the one handling that together with you. Oh, I see Mr. Mamon, this is in Laguna, but I think Enchanted Kingdom is still doing well, right? Congratulations. But I am really very much concerned over the fate of our over 50,000 local workers. I guess excluding, that doesn't include the SM workers because you're doing well with a good domestic consumption. <laughs> These 50,000 local workers are mainly from industrial parks and export-oriented companies. And these are the 50,000 domestic workers in those export-oriented companies who have been sidelined from work by the global crisis. Because of our special concern for them, the Export Development Council, chaired by Secretary Peter Favila, who is not here now because he's waiting for me in my next appointment, which is to meet with the exporters of the Philippines. Well, that council, but some of you are members here, has submitted the Bill of Materials for the 1 billion peso export support fund. I hope that's part of Bobby Amores' paper. And I have instructed Secretary Favila to work with the presidential management staff, the Department of Finance, and the Department of Budget to facilitate the final evaluation of the various proposals with the intent of releasing the fund soonest. And I hope that that will help our export sector. But it's not only the government. It's not only our employers as employers. It's also the people as people that need to work all together. On the part of the people, now is the time for pulling together and focusing on family and the community. We must initiate a new era of volunteerism and community spirit. And as I said, this should include the government